In this series of videos, we will read the Care Certificate Workbooks, both what you need to know and what do you know now. This video covers Standard 1, Understand Your Role, what you need to know. And now it's over to my colleague to read through this workbook. The Care Certificate, Understand Your Role, What You Need to Know, Standard 1 of the Care Certificate Workbook. All the information covered in the video today can be found at the Skills for Care website www.skillsforcare.org.uk Your role, tasks, behaviours and standards of work. Your role will have a job description. This tells you what your main duties and responsibilities are and who you report to. Ask your employer for a copy if you do not have it. You should know what is expected of you but also what is not included in your role. It is, it is almost impossible for a job description to list every task you do, but it should give you a good overall picture of your role. The kinds of duties that might be in your job description are providing care and support, working in a person-centred way, communicating well, building relationships and promoting equality and diversity, working as part of a team, being a supportive team member and developing your skills to improve your work, contributing to activities in a safe way, keeping and filing clear records, keeping to regulations, following the agreed ways of working, respecting confidenti confidentiality by not discussing any personal information on individuals or staff with unauthorised people and storing records securely. Regulations are rules that come from legislation or laws. The legislation establishes the, the general law of the land and regulations provide the specific ways in which those laws are interpreted and applied. The skills and knowledge you need to carry out your role competent, competently and the ways in which you work are set out nationally. You can find these in the care certificate that is shared, that is the shared health and social care training covered by this workbook. It is expected that new health and support care workers and adult social care workers will complete the 15 care certificate standards shown in this workbook before they work without supervision in any workplace. The Code of Conduct for Healthcare Support Workers and the Adult Social Care Workers in England. This has the moral and ethical standards expected of all health and social care workers and the code can be find in, found in either of these two links. When you click on the links, this is what your manager may ask you to become familiar with. It may be that they've got a printed copy within the workplace and you can get it from clicking on these links. Six C's. Now the six C's will be covered throughout all of the workbooks and I will quickly show you a image. So again, this might be familiar. So we have got compassion, competence, communication, courage, commitment and care. So they are the six C's of nursing or the six C's of care. Competence. Having the ability and expertise to understand an individual's needs in order to deliver effective care. Continue to build on your knowledge and skills. You may be asked to take a qualification during or after completing induction. Employees should invest in their workers' learning and development be beyond their induction. Experiences, attitudes and beliefs. Your experiences, attitudes and beliefs are part of what makes you you. They affect how you think, what you do and how you do it. Your background, upbringing, education, experiences and relationships will all have played a part in the way you see things. These attitudes and beliefs may have led you to choose to work in health and social care, but sometimes they could lead you to assume the things about people that are not right. It is important that you develop self-awareness so you can learn to check this does not happen. You should take time to learn about and understand the different attitudes and beliefs of others so that you can work with individuals in a way that takes these into account. Beliefs. beliefs can be described as the things in life that you feel strongly about, that guide you in your daily life and are linked very closely. Attitudes. Attitudes are the approaches, opinions and mindset that you have developed through your upbringing and life and learning experiences. Values, aims and objectives. It is important to understand what your employer wants to achieve as it will help you to understand your own role. Your organisation will have values, aims and objectives. Usually these can be found on the website or they might be printed too. Values are, are the beliefs or ideals 
that should be evident in all aspects of the service you provide. Aims are the general goals in the that the organisation hopes to achieve through their activity. The purpose of your job will co contribute to achieving these. Objectives. Objectives are specific things that must be in place in order for you to achieve the aims. If you find that your employee does not have these written down, ask your manager to tell you what they are. Rights and responsibilities at work. There are many pieces of legislation that exist to protect us from harm as workers and to make sure that everyone is treated fairly. So we have the example here of the health and, sa of health and safety. The Health and Safety at Work Act, etc. 1974, sets out your rights and responsibilities in the workplace. You have the right to work in an environment that is safe and to be provided free of charge with the equipment that you need to keep you safe at work. With those rights come responsibilities. Your employer will set down policies and procedures or tell you about the agreed ways of working in ways that are safe for you and safe for those you work with and people you support. You must work in the ways that you are told to by your employer. If you have any concerns about safety within your workplace, you must talk to your manager. You can find more information about health and safety at work if you click on this link. So I've clicked on the link so you can be familiar with what it will look like. It's going to look something like this. Confidentiality. The General Data Protection Regulation GDPR 2016 replaces the Data Protection Act 1998. This covers any information related to a natural person or data subject that can be used to directly or indirectly identify the person. It can be anything from a name, a photo, an email address, bank details, posts on social networking websites, medical information, or a computer IP address. It will also introduce digital rights for individual citizens. The GDPR restricts how personal and sensitive information can be used, stored, and passed on. Personal details must not be passed on unless the person gives their permission. These laws give you the rights as an employee and also require you to treat individuals' information responsibly. You should only pass on information on, in line with your employee's procedure and for the purpose of providing the best care. And you can find out more information if you have a look on the ICO website. So this has been updated. So if I click this link. So the Law on Data Protection the law on data protection has changed from the 25th of May 2018. The GDPR is new Europe-wide law that replaces the data protection. So just wanted to um, update there as that talks about 2016. And this is why it's always really important to keep up to date with training. And the website there, the ICO, so that's the website there where you can find lots of information. Working conditions. There are many pieces of legislation that demand that terms and conditions of employment are fair. For example, the law states that you do not usually have to work more than 48 hours per week, although you may choose to do so. Exactly when you work will depend on your contract. You can find out more information about working contracts and conditions if you click on this link here. And it will look something like this, so you can have a nosy there. The Equality Act 2010 gives all people in the UK the right to be treated fairly and afforded equality of opportunity. This means that people must be paid equal pay for equal work, regardless of protected characteristics or differences. The amount that your employee pays for you to work must meet national minimum wage in, up until April 2016 or national living wage from April 2016. And again, you can find out more information about the Equality Act 2010 when you click the link. So I've clicked it and this is what it might look like when you click on it. Protected characteristics. The Equality Act 2010 identifies nine protected characteristics or groups that are protected under Equalities Law. The protected characteristics are age, being or becoming a transsexual person, being married or in a civil partnership, being pregnant or having a child, disability, race, including colour, nationality, ethnic or national origin, religion, belief or lack of religion, belief, sex and sexual orientation. 
agreed ways of working. Your employee will tell you the safe and agreed ways in which you are expected to work. This may be shared with you as part of a policy or provided in person by your manager or another colleague. Agreed ways of working with each individual will be de detailed in care plans. They ensure that you are working within the law and providing care and support that meet the, the needs of the individual. If you don't follow the agreed ways of working, you could harm yourself or others without meaning to. You are responsible for your own work and you could face disciplinary procedures if people come to harm as a result of your actions. This could lead to dismissal or even prosecution. You have responsibilities to the people that you provide care and support for and you must ensure that their safety and welfare is protected by ensuring that their care plan is followed and carried out in agreed and safe ways. The care plan that receives the care that they receive meets their needs by involving them and their carer or support network in the planning, review and delivery of care. They are treated fairly and that their rights are upheld by working in ways that promote equality and diversity and uphold their dignity and human rights. Not all individuals you support will be confident or able to speak out. If their care is inadequate or they are treated in ways that do not uphold the rights, you must support them to make a complaint or raise concerns yourself. Reporting errors. We're all human and mistakes sometimes happen. When mistakes are made, it is important to be honest and identify where errors have happened. This will allow action to be taken that may reduce the impact of the mistake, lessons to be learned through thinking about and agreeing what went wrong. Employers should provide or explain their whistleblowing policy and you've, you have a responsibility to report things that you do not feel are right, are legal, or if anyone at work is neglecting their duties. This is known as whistleblowing. In most cases, you, you should discuss your concerns with your manager. However, if you felt that it was not appropriate to speak to your manager for some reason, you should follow your employee's whistleblowing procedure and ways of working. And if you search whistleblowing.gov, you will find there more information about what you can do if you do not feel it's appropriate to discuss the whistleblowing with your manager. Working in partnership. Your role will, invert, will involve working with many people who have a variety of roles. This is known as partnership working. Developing good relationships will help you to improve the quality of care provided. The main working relationships in health and social care can be categorised in four ways. Individuals and their friends and family, your colleagues and managers, people from other workplaces including advocates, volunteers and community groups. Advocate. An advocate is someone who provides support by speaking for an individual on their behalf. For example, an individual's carer may provide support by visiting or providing food to them in their local social care or health setting. You should be helpful and make sure that this is built into the care plan and routine and is understood by other workers. You might also support the individual to share their wishes with the carer. Other workers might provide a service to someone you provide care and support to. For example, a dietitian might advise the individual about their weight and help them agree a plan for their meals and snacks, taking into account any preferences or special dietary needs. As the worker likely to see the individual most regularly, you could encourage them to keep the diet and support them to report back how the diet is working or if it needs to be changed. The individual, if the individual was not eating or unwell, as a result, you would arrange for the diet to be reviewed quickly. Very often, healthcare support workers or adult, so or adult social care workers are in a position to play an important role in making observations and links with other workers because they are in such regular contact with the individual. They are very important partners in overall health and social care provision to the individual. All working relationships should involve mutual respect and should value other people's skills and knowledge with a focus on working together in the best interests of the individual receiving the care and support. The importance of the person, uh, the importance of people working together should not be underestimated 
a serious case reviews, which are the reviews carried out where a vulnerable adult dies or comes into significant harm, often identify failings in partnership working as being the key factor in what went wrong. Effective partnership working. Good communication between everyone is essential. Health and social care workers must trust, value and respect one another, having belief in everyone's ability to work together to achieve shared goals. The six C's. Communication. Effective communication is central to, to a successful workplace for both individuals and staff alike. For communication to be good and effective, it must be open, accurate and understandable. Ways of communicating and language must be right for the individual, so you can be sure they understand what is being said. Workers should avoid using jargon, which can be misunderstood. When working with people who have communication needs, it, is ne it may be necessary to consider translators, pictures or communication boards to support them to communicate well. Jargon. Jargon or complex terminology must not be used by health and social care workers with individuals or their friends and family. Be mindful that jargon may be familiar to you and your colleagues, but not necessarily to the individuals you support. Accurate records must be kept to ensure that all those involved are kept up to date with the individual's progress and care. If an incident occurs, information must be shared efficiently and safely. All records must be up to date, understandable and stored securely. Trust. Trust is important to all good working relationships and is essential if partnership working is to be open, honest and successful. Everyone involved in partnership working, both the person receiving the care and the support and the workers, must be confident they can rely on the people working with them. It is important to work in ways that promote respect. You should understand and respect the contribution that individuals play in the planning and providing of care. This applies to every person being supported and their carers and support network, as well as to other workers. Advice and support. There may be times where there is disagreement between workers from different agencies or between the person receiving the care and support and those who support them. Conflict that is not resolved can affect the quality of care. You should ask for advice about the partnership working and resolving conflict wherever you face a problem. You can ask your manager or other workers who are familiar with your place of work and have the skills and experience to advise you. In the next video, the care certificate, understand your role, what do you know now? Standard one. This will be covered in the next video. Great work on finishing this What You Need To Know booklet. In this series, we also have the What Do You Need To Know activity booklet that follows on from this video.